So just to continue on from the last video we did about internal external, we did some live training because that's what we do. And Lockie has some questions. And that's why we do it, because the live questions give you the live questions, the live training gives you questions about what went well, what did you miss? And you have to invest in loss to get them, right? So Lockie's been asking about kicks. So your question was about front kick. How to defend the front kick, right? So he comes in with front kick. So you kick you know, we do that a lot in Wing Chun because we do the front kick because obviously it's a good kick to the stomach, to the groin and it was the knee in, in self-defense, but in training, we just tap it to the body, and that would be obviously a hard body kick. But what it does, it sets you up for your upper, upper gate strikes, right? Because the person reacts to this, and then the head comes forward, you get the strike. You stamp, head comes forward, you get the strike. So you're distracting somebody with other tools and other problems to get in, to get the bridge. So the whole point of live training, when Lucky kicks me, sometimes I just do this. I move back slightly, just a little bit. Sometimes his leg will touch me, and I'd be back with it, right? So you can use it getting kicked and then releasing the pressure of the kick. So the kick comes in and you just get out and you're releasing the look, you come back in and now I've got my, my, my entry and my sweep. Sometimes the kick actually lands and if you're underneath their center, you'll pop off balance because you feel that their kick was a bit high in the center, right? So if he really sinks the hip and drives it, then you're in trouble for that one, right? But you feel it, you feel it sometimes, okay, I'm just in time to bounce him. And then other times, okay, I'll just come back a little bit and then fall down. Then other times, you have your hands up, the kick comes in, and you feel you can just, uh, he was too low, when he kicks a bit higher, I can sometimes just scoop out the side, take his balance, right? Same with round kicks, he comes in with round kick. If I block it, I can break my arm. So the round kick comes in, I come out and I catch the kick, right? So my hand just sweeps down and I step back and around. So he comes in, I step out, I catch the kick, right? If it goes low, again, you catch the kick, now I draw the kick, I come back. So the timing is when he comes in, I draw back a bit and take his time. Yeah? There's loads of things you can do. Sometimes you kick me low and I just ricochet the kick out. So you circle the leg, so it comes in. It's a small hidden circle, right? Just to, to load it out. So it bounces the kick off balance, right? And then you're in. So there's lots of things you can do, but you need to be live. You need to make mistakes. You need to get them hard kicks. Like, oh, that one hurt. That one kicked me in the stomach and feel sick, right? And then you, the more you do it, the more you start to get the timing. Right? That's why my timing is good. That sometimes the kicks land. But they're not actually fully getting you because you've you've taken the sting out of it. Mm. Right? So that's the timing. That's why it's very important to train live and make mistakes. I'm not saying make mistakes by doing things wrong on purpose. I'm saying make mistakes where you try things, sometimes they don't fully work, or sometimes you miss something, or sometimes you think what you're doing is not what it should be. You know, you're missing something. And then your teacher can say to you, Oh, you didn't work because you missed this, or you were late, or you were early, right? So you, if you don't train live, how can you how can you train these things? You have to train live to get these things. You don't have to kill each other. We train hard all the time, but we're never injured because we're careful about what we're doing and we're using control. There's no egos involved. Often people want to say, Chi Sao's not fighting, but as soon as you Chi Sao, then they want to try and slap you in the face, right? When I do Chi Sao, people, I touch the face. I'm not slapping you in the face. We're touching where, where we get the free hit, right? And often we don't do it because we know we've already got it. Right? You, don't have to, you don't have to do Chi Sao where you go like, bang, and drive someone's face back and hit them hard slap them in the face. If you want to drive them back, you make your entry, you step in and you use your elbow on their chest to drive them. Don't push their head back, right? If you find you have a technique where their hands open, you can hit here. You don't go bang in the face, you just go here. I've got you, and you go to another technique. You do three techniques, right? So you see me do that a lot. I'll come around, strike, 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 strike. None of them hit, but they all touched. Now every one of, every one of them hit, your face will be exploded. Often people roll with me, I take their balance and I'm being nice to them. To show them what's what's the key point is the balance needs to be there first. And they think, oh, he didn't strike me, he couldn't get me. No, I can get you all day long. I wasn't trying to strike, I'm trying to show you what you're missing. Right? The striking is easy, that's the easy part, right? So then they get excited and they try to drive forward and hit you in the face and I got you. Okay, well even if you got me, Lockheed gets me all the time. But in a raw fight, you've got to finish me. That's different, right? This is training, and even in a sparring fight or a real fight, you might get punched ten times first. And then come back and still beat the person, right? This, uh, fighting is different than just touching for points, right? It's not, it's not a point game. So training is not, a, it's not a real fight. It's not a point game either. It's nothing. It's basically training skills. So I have no thought process about whether he hits me or I hit him. We're just flowing and we're just feeling the connection and using each other to feel the different pressures and react to that pressure. The problem is when you train people outside your own group, it often becomes a, a clash of who's best, right? And then people say. Well, Chi Sao's not real anyway, but then he's still want to beat you in Chi Sao. Okay, but I could spar with you, but I don't want to hurt you. It's all this sort of nonsense. 
you can still have parameters that you stick to and you can still test each other, right? So we can still do cheese out with no headshots and roll with no headshots and you can still work robustly and test our skills or whether we're controlling. See, he got my balance there, right? Whether he got my balance or whether I got his balance or whether he got a strike, right? You can still test your skills perfectly well without hitting each other. Just don't hit the head, right? And so we say, oh, but it's not real then. But you said it wasn't real anyway, right? Now this, when I strike like this, to the face, right? To the body, to the face, it's just there. It's not hard to make an adjustment. If I strike it here, to the face, right? So the, the, the real strikes are there. They're all there, like this is the face. He blocks it. This is the, yeah, the fucking, blocking, blocking. Yeah, this is the, the face, right? So your techniques are all there. You don't have to, you can see, your chest gets red. Now imagine that's your face, right? Mm -hmm. Your nose will be like this, right? Your eyes will be hanging out, right? You can still train robustly. We're not hitting too, each other too hard. But even that pressure for the face would be too hard, right? So I don't want to hurt his neck, right? You can hit someone in the face and just get soft tissue damage, but then you can still damage the neck worse, right? So you don't want to damage someone's neck, right? So when you're training, you can train. We always train to hit the chest for my, my intermediate to big, bigger than intermediate. The advanced people, we hit higher, but no pressure. You know, if you can't control the pressure, my rule is that don't do it, right? You can only do it when you can do it. If you can chop and control, like I can, then you can do it. If you can't do that, don't do it. Right? Now, Loki started adding kicks in the last few months. So now and again, his g out, he's catching me more, so I put my mouth guard in. I said, no, don't worry, I put my mouth guard in because his timing went off a little bit for a while because he's adding new, new ranges, right? Now it's getting better, so I'm not wearing my mouth guard, right? <laughs> so, but the first three sessions, remember, the first three sessions, he's like, oh, sorry, he's scratching me, punched me in the mouth, I'm like, oh, all the beginner <laughs> stuff, right? But that happens because you're starting to recalibrate. And if you don't have live training, you can't recalibrate, right? And you need that recalibration um, to make it real. Otherwise, it's not real.